Okay, I just wanted to say quickly that this is based off of my experience, and if you had a different experience, you know, good for you. All right, but good. On to the video. So you're going to college. Congratulations! Oh, confetti! Okay, buckle down, because this is going to change your life. Whether you're there for two years, four years, or tackling grad school as in your future, college can help you grow and learn in various different and sometimes surprising ways, even if you decide to drop out. And if you switch your major, for example, from something like biology to business communication, you actually learn more about yourself and your surroundings. And don't worry if you have to stay an extra semester or two. A few of my friends had to do that as well. It'll be okay. But how do you know that? I don't. But you don't live your day-to-day -day life full of absolute certainty. So why would you force yourself to be certain of your career? You don't have to be certain in order to move forward. You just have to move. And before you know it, you'll already be there. Alright, time for some college tips. Let's go! Tip 1. Textbooks. My first recommendation is Amazon. But you gotta go to more buying choices or to the other sellers tab in order to get the best deal. Another option is to check and see if your school has a textbook buy and sell Facebook group. Mine did, and it was super helpful, especially when I needed a copy of a book a professor had written. It's also a great place to get rid of your textbooks. You can loan your textbooks out if you want to keep them in the long run, although a word of caution because not everyone is respectful of other people's property as they should be. Okay, I know eBay sounds sketchy, but I would argue that Amazon can be as equally as sketchy as eBay. Personally, I have had more negative experiences with Amazon than with eBay, and I'm actually an eBay seller at the moment. On eBay, it's easier to tell if a seller is trustworthy than on Amazon. Just look at the seller's page. An indication of good seller is reviews, ratings, and how many stars are behind their username. Now, sometimes people selling textbooks aren't going to have many stars behind their name, so it's best to see if they're selling other things like books or collector's items. Or you can just message the seller for more info or pictures, and if they don't respond within a few days or so, maybe don't buy from them. Another good place that I've heard of is Chegg. I haven't gotten any textbooks from there myself, but my friend Lisa said that she ordered a textbook from there and got a free can of Red Bull with her book. Apparently, they like to send students energy drinks. More sites that are definitely worth checking out are Half Price Books and Barnes & Noble. They both have a textbook tab on each of their websites, which is super helpful. Here are some other sites that I've heard of but haven't used. Typically, I just go with whatever's cheaper, because ain't nobody got extra money to spend on college. Or after. Tip number two. Professors are people and therefore can drastically differ. From business professors, communication professors, art professors, or science professors, or whatever classes you're taking, some professors give out a lot of reading, some professors are very strict, some professors are more relaxed, some professors are understanding, and some professors think that it's not fair to the other students if they let you turn in an assignment via email when you literally can't get out of bed because your insides are at microbiological war with each other. I'm not bitter. In short, classes will depend on the person. Professors are just people like the rest of us. Tip number three, presentation tips. Be proud of your slides, even if you hate the topic or have no idea what you're saying. It's okay, a lot of people don't. Welcome to college. Over the years, I've sat through thousands of presentations. I'm partially a comm major, so it's actually probably more than that. So I'm going to give you some good and bad examples of slides. Good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. And my number one presentation tip is carnivalslides.com. They have so many great templates you can download to Google Slides or to PowerPoint. This template is my favorite and I've used it for a lot of different presentations. But go check them out for yourself. Not sponsored by the way. If you can't have a PowerPoint or slides, I highly recommend writing out what you're going to say ahead of time. Some people just need an outline for their main thoughts, but I was the type of person who wrote out everything I was going to say word for word. Gather your thoughts ahead of time. I dare you. Tip number four. Okay, you've probably heard this before, but go to class. Unless it's a class you can afford to skip. The people who skip classes are the ones who complain about the class that they barely show up to and oftentimes get really low scores. Also, if you divide up all that money that you're paying by the number of class periods you have, you're basically wasting your money. Unless you're sick, then stay home and get better. Nobody wants your germs. This isn't like the years of school you had before. You have to tell yourself when to do homework, study, socialize, and balance all the aspects of your life. Good luck. Try not to pull all-nighters. Seriously. This can really screw up your metabolism and energy levels. Why do you think the freshman 15 is a thing? The first night, you might be pretty okay, but if you continue to do it, you're just setting yourself up for failure. 
That's not to say that some people are better at handling procrastination than others, but proceed with caution. Tip number six, work ahead. Often class materials are posted online in some sort of program. It might be the last thing you want to do, but you'll thank yourself later for it. At least think about your assignments beforehand. That's half the battle right there. Tip seven, Google Docs and Google Slides. If your school doesn't provide Microsoft Office and your professor requires you to turn things in as a Microsoft Word document, you can go to File, Download As, and pick which file type you need for that essay assignment. It also does PDF. Tip number eight, food. Unless your calf is rated five stars, then you're going to get sick of that food. Teach yourself how to make food. Just a few recipes to start with. I link some of my favorite recipes in the description for you. Cook with friends or sweetmates on the weekends. It's bonding and saves you money versus going out. Invest in a slow cooker or a crock pot or whatever you call it. That is if your place of living can have one. You pop in something in the morning on low and bam, you have dinner just waiting for you when you get home. For commuters especially, bring a water bottle and food with you if it's going to be a long day. Your brain has a hard time functioning if it doesn't have enough fuel. Tip number nine, roommates. I might make a separate video about this topic, but I had a mostly positive experience with my roommates. Basically, respect and communication are the keys to getting along with anyone, especially people you live with. Sometimes they won't respect you back, but unless it's something serious, it's best to just brush it off and walk away until they or you have had time to calm down. You're too busy to be getting into meaningless arguments. That being said, I have heard of people having just plain disrespectful roommates. Sometimes it'd be like that, and you just gotta find a way to deal with it and handle the situation properly. And finally, tip number 10, have fun! Or at least try to get the best bang for your buck. And remember, even though it might feel like it sometimes, you're not alone. Everyone is struggling around you, even if they don't seem like it. Everyone deals with something. You're all just struggling together in a little fish pond. <laughs> and by George, hi George, you can do it. Hey dear fam, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new, I welcome you wholeheartedly. If you've seen my previous videos, you might notice that I did the backgrounds a bit differently this time. I wanted to try out a different sort of feel for my videos, and I was re-watching Rebecca Parham's videos from Let Me Explain Studios, and I noticed that she had a more colored slash textured like background instead of multiple scenes that are rather detailed and that sort of thing. So I figured I'd give my own little sort of spin on that technique for this video since it isn't quite a story time video, so I had a little bit more room to play around with it, and also to save on a wee bit of time. I know that some of the backgrounds got a bit oversaturated, but it was too late and I kept them anyways, so deal with it, I guess. Anywho, thank you so much for watching and now listening to me ramble in this end card. So, uh, peace out and go in peace. Bye!